Good morning, North Lakes. It's good to be back with you again. Uh, we are continuing our series in the Core 52 book, if you haven't got it yet. Uh, I actually have a couple extra copies, and I could hook you up if you're here on Sunday. But uh, the thought is the situation where you have just finished a really good meal. Can you uh, just imagine with me finishing a big breakfast? You've had your hash browns and your, your eggs and bacon and fruit and juice. And, and you're just sitting back after having a really good breakfast. You're satisfied. You're feeling good. And uh, you lean back. And then out of the blue, your best friend says, so, um, do you, do you love me like more than all these other people? And this is your best friend. So you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I love you, dude. You're the best. And then he looks at you and says, Feed my sheep. And you kind of look at him funny. And, and then he says, no, really, do you love me? Really love me? And you're like, yeah. You just kind of go through the checklist of all the things you've been through, the, the type of depth that you have in your conversations, your trust. You're like, yeah, I love you. You're like my bestie. <laughs> and then he looks at you again and says, take care of my sheep then. And you start to get a little suspicious. What's going on here? And then a third time he says, really, dude, do you really love me? Because I'm not sure is kind of how it sounds. And so you're a little hurt and you're like thinking through and starting to doubt yourself. Like, do I, do I really love you? Have I, have I done something wrong? What, what's he getting at? And you're just kind of a little bit hesitant and you say, yeah, yeah, I really do love you, man. And then he just simply says, then feed my sheep. That's the situation Peter was in, in that breakfast, uh, breakfast of champions. The resurrected Jesus had come and visited them. They had had this amazing uh, you know, reunion with the miraculous catch of fish as a, a rewind, like, oh, I remember that. And then he's cooking breakfast and they have a great time getting to see Jesus again. He's back from the dead. He's, he's visited them before, but this is a special time. They're hanging out and they're just loving it. But he calls Peter out. And there's some other things that, uh, you know, we've done in previous things. But I just want to focus on that question and the response and then Jesus' uh, statement feed my sheep, take care of my lambs. And so we just want to highlight that in Jesus' own words here, if we want to show that we love him, if we want to prove our love for him, we will feed his sheep. We will take care of his sheep. And so we uh, obviously have to ask two quick, quick questions here. Number one, who are his sheep? And two, how do you feed and care for them? Now, uh, let's just take a moment and remember what shepherds were. I mean, this goes way back in the Jewish history of the leaders and the culture. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were nomadic herdsmen with their flocks. And so that was a part of the culture and it just was passed down. And 
And one of the heroes of the faith in Israel was David, who was known as the shepherd king. Uh, And so before he became king chosen by God, he was a shepherd. And one of the things that was very uh, important or, or just part of the life of a shepherd is that they were always with the sheep. They were always hanging out with them. They were always uh, in amongst them. And so they might smell or they might be a bit dirty. And, uh, you know, the Egyptians, you know, it really despised uh, shepherds as a profession. Uh, and so, you know, that when they went into Egypt, they actually had this own separate area where they lived away from uh, the other Egyptians because of it. And so there is this really unique culture of being shepherds that comes into play. And so when we ask that question, who are his sheep and uh, how do we feed and care for them? I first thought of John chapter 10. It says this in verse 14 and in verse 16. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I will bring them also, and they too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. And uh, so from a passage like that, we would gather that we know his sheep are the ones who hear his voice, who listen uh, to the gospel, and they uh, hear the teachings of Jesus and follow them. They, they've they accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. And so his sheep, those that belong to him, have heard his voice, they know him, and they are listening and following him. So look around the room. <laughs> and if you are one of his sheep, why don't you just Give a nice bye to your neighbor, to your friend, to your family. Uh, I know it sounds silly. Uh, Man, this tune popped in my head as I was thinking of this, uh, you know, and these words started changing, you know. God, the Father, had a church, E-I-E-I-O, and in the church, he had some sheep, E-I-E-I-O, with a bye-bye here and a bye-bye there, here about, there about, everywhere a bye-bye. God the Father had a church, E-I-E-I-O. And so we know, Jesus said, you will know him if you're listening to him, if you've heard him, if you know him. And he also uh, said that you will know them by their fruit. So um, Jesus said those who love him will obey his commandments, that they will listen to his voice, you'll see that fruit in their life. So if you're doing this, if you are one of his sheep and you're consistently listening to his voice and following where he leads and uh, living out his commands, then you belong to him. Second question, how do you take care of a sheep? How how do you feed and, and care for sheep? Well, I looked it up online just to see how, you know, you take care of actual sheep. Here's the list. You have to feed them the right kind of food, of course. Uh, There are certain kinds of uh, vegetation that aren't so good for a sheep. And so you have to have the right mix of clover and hay uh, in order to keep them healthy. You can't overfeed them. Uh, you have to make sure they have fresh water and access to salt. They, they have to have some shelter from harmful ailments like the heat or the cold. Uh, they need proper boundaries uh, set up to uh, protect them from predators, but also to prevent them from wandering off and getting lost. Uh, they need regular health checkups. And at least once a year, they need to be shorn. Uh, The shearing is a very important process. So let's just walk back through those real quick and kind of make a little application to if we're talking about people as sheep, right? Uh, Taking care of God's flock. 
So first you have to feed them the right kind of food. Uh, that would be uh, the type of things that spiritually speaking, we're talking about the truth. Uh, make sure that it's founded in scripture and God's word. Uh, we need to make sure that they're getting the right kind of food for their health. Uh, second, not overfeeding them. And when I was thinking about that, I thought of spiritual constipation. That's that's where you're eating a whole lot. You're like maybe intaking a lot of Bible and teaching and church, but nothing's ever coming out. Kind of painful, not healthy. And so uh, in order to avoid spiritual con- constipation and bloating, uh, you need to make sure that you're also sharing uh, the word, making sure that the, the sheep are not just taking in, but they're also making sure that they're uh, giving out, uh, even though that sounds gross. Uh, third, they need fresh water and access to salt. Uh, I'll just refer you back to last week's sermon with Rob, where he talks about the the washing of the word that, that Jesus talks about. He's going to uh, present the bride of Christ, uh, the church, uh, washed by the word. And I think that access to water, fresh water, is making sure that we're preparing some fresh material and or uh, pointing them, leading them to the good food and uh, places where they're going to get salt. Um, and of course, that is a reference to the truth as well. Um, also, shelter from harmful exposure to the elements. There, there needs to be a network or a community where they can feel safe. Uh, And I hope that you think about you being a safe person, someone who is uh, aware of those needs and maybe those hurts, and that you are someone who is always a healing agent, uh, someone who helps people through those troubled times and uh, protecting them from those harmful elements that are uh, in the world. Next Proper boundaries have to be there first to protect from predators. And that would be like false teachers or things in culture that are uh, likely to deceive or distract those type of things. And then also a boundary prevents uh, the sheep from wandering off and getting lost. And in the same way, we need to make sure that we are setting healthy boundaries so that we help each other not wander off and get mixed up in stuff and we end up lost. And so um, that's kind of a, a cool thing. And then regular health checkups. I don't know if you do this in your life or in your family or in your church, just to take time to evaluate, how am I doing? And look at some of the things that Jesus called us to and some of the characteristics and be honest and say, how am I doing? And then pick one or two or three and say, you know, I really want to work on this. And I really want to let the word of God uh, penetrate, as Rob said last week, so that the word gets in and transforms us in some of those areas. And then lastly, shearing. I don't know if you've seen pictures of a sheep that hasn't been shorn and the 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 wool is so thick that it actually keeps the sheep from being able to see where it's going and hardly can move. And the feces and the urine have created such a mess that the, the blowflies come in and there's infection and worms. And this is a dangerous threat to the life of a sheep when the the wool is not uh, sheared off. And uh, I was just trying to think, you know, what is that application? And uh, the first thing I thought of was actually the wool is very useful when it is shorn off and given away so that other people can use that to make fabric or to have uh, clothing or uh, that would help those who are in need. And I think maybe in the same way, uh, one way that we need to make sure that the sheep are healthy is if they are serving and they are taking and shearing off 
you know, all the, the stuff that we have experienced in growth uh, that God has blessed us with. And we need to give that in uh, different ways of service, whether it's uh, our time, uh, our finances, or our abilities to serve others and to make sure that we're giving that away and that that growth isn't just uh, stagnating and choking us uh, because it's not being used. So let's flip it now. Let's, we've talked about the sheep. Now how about the, the shepherd? What does a good shepherd do? Now, we talked a little bit about how they're always with the sheep. I think one thing that really is important in shepherding is that he gets to know his sheep. He spends time with them. And uh, God has, or Jesus, has called Peter out. And I, I don't know that it's just a Peter calling. I think it's something that we could all apply, that if we love him, we are going to also be good shepherds like him to the flock, uh, to those other believers. And so in that way, we need to get to know the other people in the flock that he's placed us with. And uh, a good shepherd cares for his flock. And I think that would translate into prayer and to uh, loving them and, and maybe forgiving them if there's a time when there's hurt. Uh, Colossians chapter four, starting with verse two, listen to this uh, admonition by Paul. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should and be wise in the way you act toward outsiders Make the most of every opportunity and let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. See, a shepherd's always looking for opportunities to care for and to pray for and really to encourage the sheep to continue to grow and to reach out and look for opportunities just as they are. Uh, a good shepherd, as we mentioned, protects and guards the sheep. He is willing to lay down his life to sacrifice for the good of the flock. And so he's going to maybe, you know what? Sometimes when people uh, try to protect you and you don't even think you need protecting, you react badly. Or I do sometimes. I get a little defensive. If someone's trying to warn me of something or set boundaries in my life or they see something unhealthy going on, I can tend to get uh, a defensive attitude and I have to really check that. And I think that's true when we think about a, a shepherd, they're willing to take maybe somebody's negative reaction because they know that really in the long run, Caring about the sheep and warning them and trying to get them away from danger and away from uh, the predators or the false teaching or some uh, cultural trend that's not biblical. He might take some shots and people might not always like him in that moment, but the truth always comes back and people are thankful later that you cared enough to say something. Uh, and then we already talked about a good shepherd feeds his sheep, uh, gives them the good stuff, a balanced diet, leads them to uh, health and life and growth. And uh, all that is a part of this picture that we see of being a part of God's flock, but also, interestingly enough, called to be a shepherd, a good shepherd like Jesus to those other believers. Now, Sunday, if you were there, uh, you would know uh, you would have been involved in uh, some small group activities that we're going to do. And uh, so we can't really do that here very well, but I'll try to at least uh, adjust some of the phrasing. And you can try to apply some of these things that we talked about 
and find some practical ways that you can put this uh, into your life, into your relationships, in your community, in your church, even in your family. All right, so, uh, so first of all, I want you to think of someone who is a part of the family of believers, but you really don't know them at all. And I want you to spend time for a bit just praying and asking God to help you to care about them more. Okay? And there may be a, a handful of people that come to mind. You're like, you know, I, I really don't know that family or that family or, or that neighbor. Uh, I think they're a Christian, but I don't really know. So take time to just start praying for them and asking God to help you to show and to care about God's flock that is in your life, in your community, all right? Next, what I want you to do, and it doesn't necessarily have to be with those people, but I want you to write a note of encouragement. Include a favorite scripture, and maybe even explain why this scripture is your favorite. And I want you to uh, give that to someone or mail that to someone or hand it to them uh, sometime this week. All right. That will be a way to encourage uh, the flock with God's word. You give him a little taste of the goodness of God's word. All right. Your third assignment this week that you could do is uh, find someone perhaps in your small group or maybe a friend at church, and agree, uh, make sure you have each other's phone number, and agree that once or twice during the next week or two, you will call or message and just check in to see how you're doing and pray for each other and encourage each other in your just your daily life, in your in your week, in your schedule, in your routine, make sure and include encouraging and loving the sheep of God's flock right there in your community. All right. And then last but not least, I want you to think of someone that you could invite over for dinner or invite out for coffee or go for a walk. Uh, something that allows you to build a relationship with somebody a bit deeper. And during that time together, make sure you don't just keep it shallow talking about the weather or sports or politics or, or whatever uh, happens to be in the news. But get a little deeper and open up about things in your life, uh, in your faith, walk with the Lord. And get real about how are you doing with, you know, loving people, sharing your faith, uh, being honest and helping your family to grow. All those things that are difficult sometimes to talk about because they're so personal. But go to the next level with this friend that you're going to spend time with and just be real. And. I want you to take that time, whether it's at dinner or going for a walk or having coffee, to help God's flock grow deeper. And uh, I know I, I said that was the last one, but I just thought of that, uh, that other one, the last one I already talked about. But here's a, a practical um, assignment, and that is find someone in your community that you can serve. I don't know how God's going to do that, but you can pray and look for a way that you can give either your time. Uh, maybe uh, it may take volunteer hours to be a part of something that's helping the community. Uh, find a way maybe to help a neighbor that's maybe doing a project or had some damage uh, from the storms or whatever uh, this spring uh, or fall, depending on which uh, side of the world you're in. And also uh, look for ways that you can give a gift 
from your finances that would support a charity uh, that would help maybe somebody in need, um, somebody that's struggling, and look for ways uh, to do that. There's so many. If we're open, if we're looking, God will guide you to do that. Uh, let me pray for you. And then this week, uh, don't just be a sheep, which is good, but also be a good shepherd. And that's not bad. <laughs> okay, that was bad. Well, let's pray. Just forget I said that. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being our good shepherd and taking care of us and loving us. Help us to do the same for each other. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys next week.